want to talk about? Hi. Are you okay? Um, I don't know. Am I? I mean, I, I can't really tell what you're saying because like, you know. Then my third floor is tapped. Uh, okay. Same as in when a creature is tapped, you cannot you cannot block with it or cover it until it is tapped. Some creatures have a ability. Hey, right over here. Uh, Sorry about that. Uh, How are you doing? It looks like you're trying to socialize yourself, people. Good luck, school. What's your name? Beep. Beep? Fuck yeah, Blue Jerry. What did I say? I'm sorry. Yes. Oh. <laughs> you, you, look, you, look, you look sad. What's up? Uh, um, um, I have a problem with making friends. So I'm sorry to hear that because people are giving you a hard time about it. Well, when you want some help, maybe to get more comfortable around people, if you kind of take the time to kind of learn about it. Uh, it would also be really nice to kind of be one on one so you don't have to brush away from everyone else. So come on, let's go. I'm a great adventure. <laughs> about friendship! One of the biggest things, if we're talking about friendship here, that like it's oversight, it's just the pure value of having a friendship, or taking friendship seriously. Which I really admire you try to go out of your way to kind of like meet and greet people, that's really nice. But just to put into perspective how important friendship is, is that from the American Psychology Association, they said that in 2021, that 12% of U.S. adults have friend, uh, best friends. And that's only a 3% increase from 1990. Let that sink in with that. Just how people are just like, oh, friends are just friends. But they, we need those kinds of social interactions to kind of like become human or be human. It's one of the most part things. And if you don't want to take my word, uh, and my resources, we could also just ask people that have gone through these similar processes of making friendships and becoming uncomfortable. Just like. Alright, so how do we be? With me, I have. Can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Logan. I use you hand pronouns. Hell yeah. So we're gonna ask a few questions and we're gonna be talking about, like, just the importance of friendship and stuff. So the first question we have is how are friendships important for, like, Learning. It could be for personal growth or in a more educational sense. Well, I know for me at least, like, when I was younger, I had a really hard time making friends. But then when I did make friends, it was like I was just so much happier. Um, and just, like, having another person can be really nice and helpful. Yeah. Alright, so I'm here with one of my personal friends. I'll let him introduce himself. Hello, I'm Sam Campbell. All right, so really with our first question is, how do you think friendship is important to learning? It could just be for personal growth and educational sense. What do you kind of see work? Well, um, friends are pretty cool in the fact that everyone has at least some sort of slightly different interest. And when those, when you interact with those people, even if they have a lot of similar interests to you, there'll always be that one or two things that they really care about that you've never really tried yet, and therefore, you might get persuaded or goaded or yelled at until you try it. Like, say, I don't know, aerials or rock climbing or playing some stupid card game. Um, and, like, you get to try these new things that you've never really experienced before. Yeah, perfect. The so, person I'm going to be interviewing is Al Letterman. She is himself. Yeah, my name is Adler. He, him. I go to Sammy. Pleasure to meet you, Adler. So, the first question I want to ask you is... What? How are friendships important for learning? It could be something related to like personal life, or it could be for an educational like signing. Down for I'm like, let's say, like, if you don't have any friends, you know, you're probably going to be lonely, maybe yeah. depression, you know, you're going to stay away from people. 
Exactly. But yeah. if you have friends, like it'll be easier to do projects because you're not gonna have to be looking around for people because you know you can just find your friends. Yeah, that's about it. There we go. Sorry, you'll get used to it. I have visible powers for educational purposes only. Uh, you'll get used to it later. But what related the with heck? the friendships, right? It's a key value to our lives, but at the same time, they could teach us, and sometimes teaching comes with some very, uh, very not nice people when it comes to just toxic relationships or relationships that just don't work. S living skills in the schools, this is actually an article I read about this, and they kind of list, uh, if you didn't know, they kind of talk about um, what teens go through during high school to educate teens and also adults that are related to this kind of uh, relationships and stuff have this like have a list of the general things that you should be very of uh, varying which kind of follows through uh, celebrates the uh, humiliation of yourself uh, I think uh, disrespect your boundaries is a pretty big one that they kind of talked about uh, constantly criticizing you never trusting you or listening to you even if you need help or always kind of just leaves you on red without any explanation of why. And then the list kind of goes on with that. And if you want to talk more about this, I mean, here's some people and some of their experiences with how they handled their relationships. So we're back here with Logan, and we're gonna. Uh, I'm gonna ask you is how how do you embed conflicts with friends? Um. Well, I'll, I'll try to talk to them and um. Just have conversations with them and be open with them. Express my concerns if there's a conflict. And then hopefully we can come to a conclusion together. Alright, so we talked about a little bit. Uh, I want to talk to you about like toxic relationships. I'm assuming you've had your fair share. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyways, um, what is... Uh, you can go in depth as much as you want, whatever you feel comfortable with. But what's a toxic relationship that you've had that you feel like someone can learn from it? Um, so I had a friend who, we had been friends for a while and they started to like, um, they only talked to me when it was convenient for them. They never were like my friend in return, I was only theirs when they needed it. Um, and they also like, they kind of used me as their therapist, which it's okay to talk to your friends about things that are like hard things that are happening but you just don't want to overdo it you don't want to be bringing somebody else down and i know it started to have an effect on me because it was like i was always having to deal with their problems and I, they never like were there for me so that's not always the best it's not very healthy to be in a relationship like that i fully agree with that so uh now we're going to get to our next interview question that i have for sam here is uh you can go as much as depth as you want to, but mm -hmm. what's a personal experience that you've had with dealing with a toxic relationship? You could talk about the traits of why it didn't work. You could go in depth as much as you want, or you keep it service level. Just as something that you would want to tell someone else. Okay. Well, I've really only had one. As I've been kind of lucky so far. As um, as a kid from the south, being angry at people. Um, wasn't something that happened in my Christian little suburban neighborhood. Um, so we just didn't really have that. When I moved here, I sort of kept that whole, like, being kind to everyone, the, uh, sort of vibe. Uh, which helped a lot through middle school, and, uh, made it so I've really only had one in high school recently. Um, I thought they were a really cool person. They, um, like, you know, like, just were funny, they were nice to talk to. Um, but when I got into a romantic relationship with someone else, they had none of that and got got quite mad at me and hasn't really talked to me since then. Uh, and that just like shift from like sort of being happy and positive with someone to just like complete disdain for one choice still confuses me a little bit, even like to now. Yeah. Well, thank you for being vulnerable with me through that. That was very touching. Got you, Kane. All right. All right. So the next question I have for you, this is going to be more related to like toxic relationships, is you could go as much depth as you want to, and if you don't want to answer the question, it's more than fine. Of uh, uh, what? If you ever been in a toxic relationship, what's one thing that you learned out of it that you wish you knew ahead of time? 
like you know, for like a bad influence usually, like uh, if they're like they're uh, smoking or they pour stuff onto people, like yeah, you want to well, like stay away from them. I'd say. All right. Like especially if you know they have like a criminal record. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yeah. That's when you stop hanging around them. Yeah. Have you ever had any personal experiences related with like a toxic person in your life? Mm, not really. Like maybe people who are kind of like you know uh, jerks. But yeah, yeah, that's kind of all. Yeah. What uh, what's something that like uh, what's something that they saw that they did that in your mind you're like yeah they're jerks. Yeah. Like uh, usually like if they think it's okay to like make fun of someone or you know like how they act. Yeah, yeah. they're probably a jerk. All right. Perfect. So Will you stop doing that? I'm Seriously. sorry. There's a few side effects of like motion sickness that come from my magical magical powers, but uh, you'll get used to it. Like I said. So, I think when you're like, got toxic relationships, and relationships in general, in my opinion, where it truly starts is the relationship with yourself. You know Mr. Rogers, right? He hosted this amazing children's show. He actually states that, I, that he says that I think everyone longs to be loved, and longs to know that he or she is lovable. And consequently, the greatest thing you can give to someone is to make sure that they know that they're loved and are capable of loving. Because when it comes to insecurities, it comes from this I idea of that you'll be judged, and we, as humans, we take bad stuff very personal. But so I feel like if you get out of your comfort zone and you kind of just realize, they're like, it, sure, yeah, you'll be toxic people. That's go, it's bound to happen. There's 80 billion people. But just to understand of what people are looking for, they're just looking for a place that they'll be loved and desirable. And that's kind of the true value of being friends, and I under and it it can be hard to kind of express yourself like that, and the main, and we all struggle with this. And you would take a winner. All right. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Did I stutter? Yeah, you know <clears throat> well, anyways, I have my final question for you here. <laughs> what is the best piece of advice you can give to someone? It could be something specific to Sammy, what we could do at Sammy, or it could just be in general. Best piece of advice? Just yeah. period? Yeah, about making friends and Oh, stuff. okay, damn. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say NFTs are a scam, which is true, but Fair um, that's really not gonna help you as far as much as friendships. Um, I mean, really, just if you want to make friends, um, I've found time and again that the easiest way to do that is find a pre-existing group of people who share interests that I do, whether that's some sort of club at school or maybe some sort of like event that's happening at some sort of business elsewhere. Those people are going to be um, there specifically to talk about the things that you're also interested in, and you can strike up a quick conversation and make friends pr very quickly that way. Yeah. Well put. Well, thank you so much, Sam, for uh, letting me interview you for, for this project. You are most welcome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, so my final question for you today is, what are some tips you would recommend for people to try to make friends? It could be at Sammy, it could be at Unity, it could be a freshman, it could be just anything. Like, let's say, like, uh, there's people sitting at a table in, like, one empty spot. I'd say usually sit there, you know, you'll find some stuff in the room. That's really well put. Well, thank you for this interview. It's a pleasure. The final question I have for you is, uh, what a piece of advice do you have for someone that's struggling to make friends? It could be at Sammy or it could just be in general. Uh, I just, like, don't be afraid to be yourself around them because if you're not yourself around people, they're eventually going to, like, find out who you are and it's better t to, like, have real friends that know who the real you is. And, um... Yeah, just, like, be open. You'll find the right people, eventually. Well, thank you for taking the time for uh, to follow through with these interview questions. And I'll hand it back to uh, Sam. Take care, man. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Again? Seriously? I'm... Hey, at least you're holding it in. <laughs> Listener. Here, come over here. I want to talk to you. Not uh, the 30 pe plus people that are in listening, watching this video, but just to you. You know what I mean? When it comes to this kind of stuff, it can feel like this doesn't apply to you or that this doesn't this isn't helpful. And I'm going to agree with you. In a sense of that, like, 
every single person is individually different and unique and what we talk about could help a lot of people but it could also be as equally as like uh, interested and that's that's fair but if everything that we talked about went through your head if it could just be by your own uh, doing your own activities or just enjoy the film that we made the main idea i want to get out is that we're all uh, i feel like mr rogers put this out amazingly is that we're all part of the human family this awkwardness that we share between meeting new people is a more than normal thing to go through and i wish that was more ex socially acceptable to throw yourself out there but in his words, the more we can be in a relationship with those who might seem strange to us, the more we could feel like we're neighbors and all members of the human family. Okay, that's nice, but who the heck were you talking to? You know what? This is an educational video, right? I mean, is it? Oh, right, you don't know that stuff. What? <laughs> I feel like it's missing something. Something a little jazzy or something, you know? Yeah, I got that. I got that feeling. Yeah, you feel that feeling? No. All right. And one, and a two, and a one, two, three. Come on! I swear to you, no.